So the case of me sitting in the house and giving a consent or, or, or being a Christian, I find myself in a workplace and yet nobody can identify if I am a Christian. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. I said to the first service that in this country, it is easy for somebody to identify you as NDC or MPP. It is very easy. You just have to talk or behave in a certain way or somebody leaves a power, then you order, then somebody will say, ah, that's the NDC people or that's the MPP people. Right? Uh-huh. So if no one can identify you amongst your friends as a Christian, there should be a problem with it. There should be a big problem with it. What the scripture is enjoining us to do is to stand out and be counted. Show up that I'm a Christian. That when you talk to your mom or your dad or your wife or your husband or your friends who probably have a different persuasion and a different opinion, don't keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. You ought to contradict Go out with him outside the city gate. Go out with him outside the city gate bearing his reproach so that they would know and more important, not just people knowing but that God will see you as his own. The scripture says that if you deny me before men and and church, this is what it means to deny God before men. This is what it means. Let me give you a few examples. And then you would, you would not be in doubt as to what it means for you to deny Jesus. It is like somebody gets up and says, I don't believe that Jesus actually came and died and all this story that they say. You heard. And then you say to yourself, that, I mean, why argue with somebody about that? It is his opinion. Me too, my opinion, I keep to myself. And you do not say that I believe that he came and died. And I am a living proof that he washes from sin. You just deny him before men. What it also means to deny him before men is to be able to turn your back onto his word. That you are a Christian. You are a Christian, born of God, filled with the Spirit of God. Maybe you are a boss. Your desk is where papers pass and things like that before they are approved. And maybe, you know, some years ago there used to be a location. When you want to build a house, you go to the ministry there and get an allocation of cement. With that cheat, you take it out to go and be supplied cement. I remember very well, I had to go with my dad somewhere to collect that cheat to for him to buy a cement to be able to build. And I remember that very well. This was in the early 80s. So you go out there for a cheat and all that. So it's your desk that the things pass. And you are a Christian. You have just come to church Sunday. And you have heard that you ought to go out with Christ outside the city gate to be identified with him. Then on Monday, the things pass your table. You look at it and say, oh, Master, I didn't put any weight on the paper. So it will fly away. I mean, I mean, yeah. <laughs> It, 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 it will fly away. You need, to, you, know, you, need to, you need to put some weight on the paper so that, you know, the, <laughs> so that, so that it, has, it doesn't fly away. And if it flies away, other ones that are still on the table, the ones that we sign, you have just denied Christ before men. You have just denied Christ. It's not easy, your church. It's not easy. When the scriptures say, go out unto him outside the camp, it's not easy. So do that. You know, you do that. You collect something and put it in your pocket and all that. Then, you know, and all that. That's what you say to yourself. And somebody told me that before. Somebody told me that before. But, ah, so be it, and all that. Somebody told me that before. I refused to give him what he asked for. And, and, and that's it. I didn't get what I was looking for. Well, he didn't get the money from me. I'm sure other people gave it to him. But you see, what identifying with Christ does to you? 
is that it makes you deny yourself. Because you may be seeking it so badly, yet you deny yourself of it because you choose to identify with Christ. So you will not do the wrong to get it. And also it makes you die unto the world. It makes you die unto the world. It makes you lose your friends. It makes you lose companies. It makes you, you know, be looked at differently and all that. At the end of the day, what it does is that you end up identifying with him. And Jesus will say, if you confess me before men, I will also confess you before my Father and his holy angels. If you confess me before men. You know, sometimes there is a likelihood that many of us wonder if God is there. Why is he allowing me to go through this or to go through that? Sometimes many of us wonder, what at all have I done to God? Why can't God do this or do that for me? Long ago, I have learned to ask myself a simple question. How recent has it been that I have identified with him openly? How much of him have I identified with? Because, you see, with him, he probably also will be wondering, are you mine or not? If you are mine, I was telling somebody what, you know, the prophet said unto Eli. In, in, in 1 Samuel 2, the scripture says that those who honor me, I will honor in verse 30. Those who honor me, I will honor. But those who dishonor me, I will lightly esteem. This is God. And what it means to lightly esteem is the one that they say, oh, do you understand waves the hand like that? You know, it's like uh, you are running to the car park. Maybe somebody has called you, you know, and you're going to the car park. Then somebody shouts and say, Oh, Kofi, 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 Kofi. Oh. And then continue. You're like, Oh. I, I, I was calling. Oh. Yeah, I thought somebody better I was calling. That's lightly esteemed. And many of you, when humans do that to you, it hurts you. I'm not saying Kofi will do that. Kofi is not that type. When somebody does that to you, because you are lightly esteemed, it's like you have no significance, no value, no real thing. I will say, what's that? Do you understand? That's, you are being lightly esteemed. You know, let the rich man's children come. You, poor man, you stay here. You know, that kind of thing. You are being lightly esteemed. Because you... you you don't have a deep pocket. Uh -huh. Now with God, he says that if you honor me, I will honor you. But if you dishonor me, I will lightly esteem you. So in other words, when you are in the point where you are groaning and crying and yearning and reaching out, you'll be like, who is that? Martin. Oh. That's, that's what it means to lightly esteem. You have no real value for me to go all out and stretch my arm to draw out. So then you will be there wondering, where is God? Because you have dishonored him for so long that he will lightly esteem you. But many of us think that you can do the wrong thing. You can do anything. Then when you are in difficulty, just pray. Didn't he say come to his throne so that you receive mercy and find grace in the time of need? But he also say, if you dishonor me, I will lightly esteem you. Now, so going out to him outside the city gate is an everyday choice, an everyday decision. And church, it doesn't come easy. Sometimes, like I always say, we will stumble, we will fail. But we pick up ourselves and we continue. Because it becomes critical and important. 
that people identify me and know him in me. It should be unacceptable to every one of us if somebody have known you for three months and cannot tell if you are a Christian. If somebody has known you for three months and cannot tell if you believe in Christ or not, it should be unacceptable. It should be unpalatable. Because, honestly, in my view, in my personal opinion, immediately you meet me, you must see Christ in me. That's my personal opinion. But being a pastor and being a human being, I think three months, right? Because some people will say, oh, I'm shy, I'm this, and I'm that, which also translates to denying Christ anyway, which also translates to that. Because, you see, you should not love your life so much to, to want a job so badly that you refuse to say or do things. So that, I mean, no, no, no. You shouldn't. But I think that if you are a Christian and somebody meets you, even a, a driver on the road, who crosses you? You should see Christ in you. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I read, I read our daily bread, you know, the one from Michigan, Grand Rapids. And a mother went out with the daughter, a young five-year-old, in the morning. In the morning. He went out and things and... No, it was the father. He went out with the father in the morning. He went out in the morning and things and came back. In the evening, the mom was going out. She went out with the mom. And when they were coming back, she asked the mom and said that, Mom, where are the morons and the fools? This morning when I went out with daddy, we met a couple of them. We met lots of morons and lots of fools, but they are not on the road this evening. And so when the lady came home, she told the husband and said, this is what our daughter asked me. That where are the morons and the fools that you saw on the road this morning? How come we haven't met them this evening? What it was was that anybody who crossed or does something, a moron, fool. And the daughter was watching and counting. Went out with the mom in the evening. People crossed and all that, but she never, no, fool, moron. And all that, she never did any such thing. So the man now had to explain to the daughter where the morons and the fools went. It wasn't pleasant. But you see, church, everyone who meets you must see Christ in you. Some of us, because we, want, we don't want to lose face, we agree with the wrong thing. Because you want to have friends, so you would agree with the wrong thing. Yet in your mind, you know that this is wrong. Now, so in identifying with him and him being part of us helps us to put to death the flesh. Okay? And also makes us dead to the world. Now then the scripture says, by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise continually unto God. Now, the reason why I went back to tie that up is because without being identifying ourselves with him, without being dead with him, we can never continually offer the sacrifice of praise unto God. Because what happens when you aren't dead with him? What happens when you are not identified with him? Is that you would grumble. You would complain. You would ask questions. Instead of continually praise him. 
It takes one who is identified with Christ. It takes one who is dead with him to accept to praise God in the midst of a disappointment. So let's, let's go back. Let's go back. When you find yourself in a place where praise is not continually coming from your mouth unto God, but rather nagging questions. Why is God allowing me to go through this? Why is that? And why is that? And why is that? Why is that? Go back to the point 11 and find out how identified with him am I? How identified with him am I? Am I dead to the world? Have I come to the place where I count it all but lost for the excellency of Christ? Now when you come to that point and answer that question, you will come to the place where I have come to conclude that there will be gratitude in your heart. And a grateful heart is a thankful heart. And a thankful heart is a praising heart. When we look at gratitude, we say to ourselves that the scripture actually enjoins us and say we should continually show gratitude. Only by that can we render an acceptable service unto God. So if you don't show gratitude, you can be grateful. You can be grateful in your heart. But the Bible says show it. Again here, the scripture is telling us that we should continually praise. It should be something that is coming from within. Then I look at the example of Paul and Silas in Acts 16. Paul has preached. And has found himself beaten and thrown into jail. The Bible says that at midnight, Paul and Silas lifted up their voice and began to praise God. So let's assume that they praised God for like 20 minutes. And praise became so full before God. And God poured back. You know, Revelation 8. God poured back. And then there comes the sounds and the thunders and the rumblings. And the foundations got shaken. Doors are flung open. And, and, and chains are broken loose. And walls cannot stand on each other. And things are falling apart. Because that's what the scripture says. It arises to the throne before the altar. It gets mixed and it gets poured back. So when it gets there, then, 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 the, then the results happen. The Bible says that the jailer came out. And thinking that the prisoners had gone, was about to kill himself. And Paul shouted out to him, we are still here. Don't do yourself any harm. And he asked them the question that many of us will not ask. What ought I to do to be saved? And Paul preached to him and got him and his household saved. And went out with them that time. He didn't wait till morning. He went out with them that night and had them baptized. There was no need for baptismal class. Nothing. He got them baptized. When they came back, the scripture says, the jailer now cleaned their sores and all that. And then he made food for them. They didn't decline. They ate. He tells you two things. They were beaten, their souls were not treated. They were hungry, needed food to eat, didn't get any. Yet in that state, they lifted up a sacrifice of praise unto God. They were not praising God because they were full. They were not praising God because they were happy. They were not praising God because they are free and contented. It was the reverse. That is why the scripture will say, a sacrifice of praise. That is why it is a sacrifice. When you face disappointment, when you face rejection, 
when you face undue delay, when you face chains of all sorts, what's your response? Is it a praise that arises from within? Praise that is mixed with tears that is coming unto this God? Or it is grumbling? Or it is counting the many years that God has not showed up? And church, it doesn't come until you are identified and dead with him. That Paul will say, I have been crucified with Christ, yet I live. And the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Until he gets there, you cannot continually praise God. One unlocks the other. Because when you identify with him, you die to self. When you identify with him, the world, you are crucified to the world. The world is crucified to you when you identify with him. So the world has no meaning, no place to you anymore. What somebody says, somebody's opinion doesn't count anymore. Somebody's idea and things do not matter to you. You are not in any competition to win somebody's approval. You are not in anything to win, be in somebody's good book. Hard luck if you think that my being a Christian is this and that. No. So at that point, praise can continually arise from your heart. But if we aren't dead with him, we aren't crucified. That's why the scripture will say, by him therefore. Because it is only him that would enable and empower us. So then it means also that praise continually is a work of grace. Praise continually is a work of grace. It is an empowerment that God enables you. And grace can only be at work when you have relied yourself wholly on Jesus. And his work for you on the cross. By him therefore. By him therefore. Let us. Offer unto God. The sacrifice of praise continually. By him therefore. So we ought to come to that point where. We identify with him. We die with him. And then we will be able to bring ourselves to the place. Where we can continually praise him. Now church. Why is there the need for us to continually praise him? Why is there the need for us to continually praise him? Because then the Lord will be magnified in your life. Then the Lord's fullness will be revealed in you. You see, we, we bring ourselves to the place where we, we, we continually praise him. In the midst of all situations then it means that we are identifying with him. Then it means that his lordship is being established. It means that we are raising him above all things. It means that we are showing that he is the one that is in charge of all things. It means that we are subjecting and subjugating all things unto him. Including the thing that holds you bound. Including the thing that is threatening you. Including what looks impossible. You are subjugating it unto the one that you are continually praising. So that's the point where God brings us. Now, if the Apostle Paul is then telling you and telling me that by him, therefore, we should offer unto God a sacrifice of praise continually. Can you wake it up? I would have understood if it's in the first service, you know, because then you are like two or one and a half hours earlier. My second service, I, 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 I don't understand. Amen. Hey John, stop laughing. You see, it brings us to that place where we now submit ourselves wholly and completely unto Him. Our church, listen. Some do not praise the Lord, let alone continually. It just tells you you aren't dead yet. Your mind is in the wrong place. Your focus is in the wrong place. 
you are thinking because I preach, because I go out to witness, because I do this and I do that, God is bound to do something for me. So once he's not done it, I'm frustrated. Why has he not done that? No. From what the scripture says, it sounds to me like a duty. Let us therefore by him continually offer unto God the sacrifice of praise. It sounds to me like a duty. It is not it is not because God has done this or done that or done this or done that I am supposed to. It sounds to me that that is what is required of me. It is something that is required of me. So I come to that point where my mouth is filled with praise. Church, it is not possible to praise God without words. It's not possible. It is not possible to praise the Lord without words or action. At least some dance or some move or some body movement or something or the other. If you can add words. That's if you are not in a position to add words. Let's say that you are mute and you cannot speak. So let's say that in that category, at least you can move your body. You can do something. The scripture is requiring that of us. Now, so, how then do we explain it? That every day, praise has not employed our tongue. How do we explain that? It's simple. It's very simple. We have not been doing it for us to get used onto it. We have not been doing it. For us to get used unto it. In, in Hebrews 5, we found out that by reason of use, they have their senses exercised to begin to know the difference between good and evil. Now, this is a good thing. So, by reason of use, you will have your spiritual senses exercised to be able to get yourself there. Now, this is how it starts. Irrespective of where you find yourself and whatever situation you are, either you have a job or you don't have a job, either it goes well or doesn't go well, you come to that place where, first of all, you have a grateful heart. A grateful heart. Because the scripture goes on and says that this is the fruit of our lips in giving of thanks. It says that that is, that's verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. The fruit of our lips. And if you say fruits of our lips, it means that our lips are continually producing it. God, I thank you. I bless your name. This one too has just ended. Not to my favor, but I thank you. It didn't go as I expected, but I thank you. It didn't give me what I asked, but Lord, I thank you. Now, it will come naturally. It will come by practice. Making a conscious effort to do that. That in the midst of all things, I want to feel the word of God. To be able to offer unto him praise continually. Sometimes tears will be flowing. But the scripture says, offer unto him the sacrifice of praise. Sometimes your heart will be heavy. Your heart will be heavy. Rick Joyner wrote a book. The Call. Yes. In case I'm mistaken, it's just memory. But I think it's the call. I used to remember the page. I think it's the last about one chapter or so. On, on worship. And he talked about a certain experience where 
a young individual who have experienced all manner of disappointments and, and, and things like that, began to just worship and to praise God. He said, the Father brought all of heaven to attention and leaned forward to, be, to receive that worship. And said that it is not natural for men through all difficulty to choose voluntarily to worship that if a true worshiper a true worshiper is one who is not worshiping based on what he wants or what he will get it is also one who is worshiping through the right channel that christ has begotten him and it's come to that place where it is birthed from there gratitude true worship and he's worshiping the father he says that the father brings all of heaven to attention to receive that worship to receive that worship that is why i said to us before that it cannot be done without christ it can't be done without christ that if you do not recognize christ you just want to be there and live your life anyhow and and think that you can you can learn to praise god through all difficulties and all you just have to wait until probably you have one miscarriage or or, or you, you 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 have maybe the devil push you in, into a corner and ties you up and and everything you touch goes bad. Or one thing that you have your great hope in it gets disappointed. Or some sickness strikes you. Then you realize that it, praise is actually a sacrifice. It is a sacrifice. And it is only made by them that have come to understand that this God, I ought to lean on him absolutely and completely so you will find yourself in a place where you can lift up a praise unto god in the most severe circumstance and worship and bless him and thank him and appreciate him not grudgingly but joyfully that somebody will look at you afterwards and say that ah i could tell you were very happy god has been good to you so yeah he's been good to me Yesterday, I got sacked from job. And when I got home, my car was bent. But I blessed the Lord, never bless. The Lord is good. He is forever with me. Bless the Lord with me. Someone said, really? In that circumstance? Say, yeah. Because that sacrifice of praise is supposed to rise from within me continually. And that is why it is only in identifying with him that we are able to do that. But church, listen. It will not come when you do not start. It will not come when you do not form the habit of wanting to thank him through all things. Some of you are waiting for God to do some wonderful thing for you. Then you will dance before him. Then, oh no, 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 no. Some of you are waiting until, you know, somebody comes and puts a ring on your hand. You would, you would, you bless the name of the Lord. Lord, I have waited for so long and you have beautified me. Praise Jesus. That's what you are waiting for. It may not come. It may not come. But you ought to come to that point where you begin to bless the name of the Lord in spite of all because in faith, you can see him doing it. That you are one who sets free. I can see you setting me free. You are one who bless the barren with countless children. I can see you bless me with children. So I bless your name. It doesn't come on its own. It comes by practice. Some of us think that if the Holy Spirit is upon you, then you just worship. No. 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 You see, you have to avail yourself. You have to keep at it. Sometimes the distractions around are so many. You won't be able to do it. But as you try your hand at it, as you go over and over, as you yield over and over, as you go into the closet over and over, you will find out that your spirit is being trained. And then you will come one day and look back and see how far you have come. I said to the first people, 
There are some who come to church, we sing, you don't sing. I mean, you make me sad, to be honest with you. You will sing. We sing, you don't sing. You won't even dance. You won't even move your body. You make me sad. I ask myself that, what's wrong with you? You see, church, listen. These same people, it's easy to, these same people, when they are playing, do me, do me, do me, do me, whatever it is, they are all over doing all that, doing this, doing that. You know, they're that. The same people, the same people, and God who sees all things is in that. Oh, have I said it wrongly? Is that what they say? Why? Oh, there are current ones. I don't know. I don't know. What, what are the current ones? You see how you know them? Eh? What? 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 Already what is it? What kind of steer is that? <laughs> What's steer? <laughs> really? <laughs> it's a song. I see. Okay, so that one. So what you you be dancing and doing that? But if God has taken a steer, you don't have that then. Eh? Drunk. Aye. <laughs> Sanewa. <laughs> no, church, listen. This is God who sees all things. He sees you. He sees you. You've made a choice. And your choice is clear. I'd rather dance out there to do things not to God. He sees that. You're that same person. You turn around and you're like, God, do it. why? I, I can't understand. I can't understand. So you have to start from a point where you begin. I'm not saying because you do it out there, when you come here to do, give God to give God's own, then go and give the devil's own. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that dance is to the devil. Some of them I think they are anyway. Some of them I think they are. Some I don't think they are to the glory of God. Some they are to the people who dance it. They are not to God. So, oh no, you, you, you understand? Some it is to the people. They have some thoughts in them they are gratifying. It is to them. They are gratifying it. Some is unto God. Some too is to the devil. Some too is to the devil. So either to man or to the devil or to God. But we are talking about to God continually. Continually. So you come to that place where you start. David said, I'll enter into his gate with thanksgiving. When I come to his gate, in every situation, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Come to his gate with thanks. Lord, thank you. Thank you for my husband. Lord, thank you for my son. Thank you for my daughter. Lord, thank you for this situation. Lord, thank you for our lips. Thank you. And as we wave away the distractions and all, and we focus, we get into his court with praise. You have done gloriously. You have done tremendously. You have put to fly the armies of the aliens. You have overcome them. You've crushed them under thy feet. Awesome God. Marvelous God. That is always rising from my heart. But you must do that to get used unto it. I say finally this church. If the scripture enjoins us to come to that place where we continually offer unto God, that's right. It might not be in the most pleasant situations. And pray has never been in the most pleasant situations. Pray is in the most pleasant situations. It's a show of gratitude. 
but praise that is a sacrifice with the scripture is enjoining us to have it is normally preceding the visitation of the lord praise that is a sacrifice that if you knew what it cost me to praise him if you know what state my heart is if you knew what i left at home to praise him if you knew what the doctor told me yesterday if you knew what my mother did to me yesterday if only you were to know what my husband said to me yesterday i won't praise him but i render unto him a sacrifice of praise for he is bigger he is greater he is awesome he is wondrous above all that is where the lord will be glorified in us that you are bigger than all you are more than what the people say there is nothing out there that can ever limit you irrespective of the words of man irrespective of the things that men have pronounced around me and over me you are bigger you are better you are awesome you are wondrous than it all because that god is who we serve and you come to that place to be able to bless him and to glorify him because he's awesome god now david will say that bless the lord with me and let's exalt his name together i will make my boast in this god that somebody will come to that place and say irrespective of what i have gone through the lord is awesome the lord is mighty to deliver and to save the lord is great and he is awesome that my praise will continually arise unto him that a thousand will fall on my left hand and ten thousand on my right hand my they will not come near my dwelling and somebody's heart will be lifted unto this god to worship him that lord i bless your name somebody join me this afternoon this morning to just bless the name of the lord that the lord is awesome he's worthy of praise he's worthy of praise he's worthy of praise the lord is mighty he is mighty to deliver he is mighty to save he is tremendous in power he is awesome he inhabits the praise of his people the lord stands awesome and shows himself strong the lord delivers the lord surprise the lord stops his hand the lord moves mightily the lord opens the ancient doors the lord rebukes the devourer the lord shows himself strong the Lord makes a way where there seems to be no way. The Lord lifts up a hand upon you. The Lord quickens you. The Lord he heals. He triumphs. And he is mighty to serve and mighty to deliver. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hmm. Let's be outstanding and let's take it together. <laughs> yes, Lord Jesus. Oh, my soul.
Lord, thank you. Thank you. May our praise be acceptable unto you. Thank you. But if I say amen. Please take your offerings. Let's bless the name of the Lord and let's continue to bless him. Amen. Indeed, Father, we thank you.